<clears throat> All right, everybody, we are live in <clears throat> the Immigration Answer Show. Haven't been here for a while. Took the week off while we um, celebrated the holidays and um, opened up our office in San Diego. We shut down the office for about a week. We were closed for Christmas Eve. Man, my hair is looking crazy. Sorry about that, people. Um, we uh, got a lot to talk about today. We're back with the Immigration Answers Show live on YouTube and in our Facebook group. Um, let me get the link so that people who want to join in and ask me questions can do that. Here's the link. Here's the link to join the conversation. Here we go. All right. So, um, Big news, Donald Trump not leaving office for another two weeks, two week, three weeks from today. Yeah, three weeks from today, today, tomorrow, three weeks from two weeks from tomorrow. Yeah, two weeks from tomorrow. Um, but he's still a mean son of a bitch. And he has extended the ban um, to uh, prohibit the State Department from issuing visas for the spouses of green card holders, the parents of U.S. citizens, um, the children of green card holders, and then a bunch of other categories. So um, we're starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel. Hopefully Mr. Trump will be gone at the end of the month. But until then, um, we are uh, still stuck with him. And so the ban is still in place. I think there's still legal challenges. I've seen... I think some lawyers are filing a new legal challenge, which I don't really understand because Trump's leaving office in 30 days. And so I don't really understand why they're filing a new lawsuit, why it wouldn't be covered by the old lawsuit. But here it is. I was going to show you guys something that I got um, that I really liked. And I'll probably make a video about it. Um, but it said, I don't know if you can see this. This is from a friend of mine, actually an immigration lawyer down in Houston. His name is Raheem. I mean, I'm sorry. He's in Atlanta. Raheem. And he sent me this. It says, please do not confuse your Google search with my law degree. I thought that was funny. And I think that's a, there's a good lesson in there. Obviously, I don't know everything. If you guys watch the show regularly, you know that if you guys want to answer, ask a question, here's the link. Um, I'm not, I don't usually answer the questions that are in the text. I like to talk to people about their situation. So um, I need you to come on into the waiting room and I'll bring you on board to talk about your situation. But um, getting back to that can, I think that's a good lesson for people. I mean, there's great information on Google, but let's say that you broke your arm. You know, you could probably find information about how to make yourself a sling. You could probably even find a video on how to do a cast, but that's no substitute to actually talking to a doctor who knows what they're talking about. So, um, and I have to do something about my hair. Maybe I should just start wearing a hat. What do you guys think? Should I start wearing a hat? Leave me a comment if you think I should start leave, wearing a hat. Um, the problem is I got this big old noggin and it's hard to find hats. Um, they say one size fits all, but they should say one size fits most. Anyway, um, that lesson from that can is a good one. So many people just hop on the internet and look for an answer. And, you know, we, we try to give as much free information as possible as we can, obviously through the show and through the YouTube channel. Um, but there's no substitute to having somebody look at your documents, look at your situation, getting a timeline. The timeline is really important. You know, when I get on a call with a new client, I want to know when did you land in the United States? And I want to know everything that's happened since. So um, I got a couple other things I want to talk about, but I, I see we have some people already waiting in the room. And of course, we always go to the people who are on camera first. Um, so we're going to go over to Ali. Ali, Zayek. Hi, Jim. How are you? Good. Uh, thank you for bringing me on. Uh, I have a question about uh, my case. It's uh, pending. And I'm sorry uh, because uh, I can't speak English very well. Your English so, is great. Uh, go ahead. Uh, my wife and I uh, married uh, about two years ago. And uh, we feel uh, uh, I-130 a uh, case on the uh, 28th of August, uh, 2019. And our case uh, were pending uh, until today. 
I want. Uh, I have a question about that. Uh, uh, when uh, our case uh, will be approved? Because the processing time uh, were delayed uh, uh, every month. Are you and I want to know how much uh, we will. Uh, we should wait uh, to approve a case and. Uh, uh, my visa for entering U.S. Uh, uh, when can I enter U.S.? So, where, what country are you in right now? Uh, Iran. Iran. Okay. And you filed the I one thirty, and it's it hasn't been approved. No, no, uh, it's pending. Is your spouse? Is it a spouse case or a fiance case? Uh, spouse case. And. Um, okay. And the, the filing date was August of 2019. Yes. 28th, August, 2019. So we're at like 15 months. Yeah. That should be approved by now. So, um, no, 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 17 months. Um, you know, right now there are all these different bans for Iranians from coming to the United States. Hopefully most of them are going to go away. Um, when Biden goes into office, but you might think about suing them that if your I-130 hasn't been approved after a year, you should sue them because otherwise you're just going to keep waiting. It's going to be. Uh, I, uh, I feel a uh, uh, case in Creek uh, and email to USCIS, but they said uh, our case in a, uh, uh, in processing and uh, uh, we should wait uh, more. Yeah, they always say that. They always say uh, that. So, what I mean, should you, I do? You can do whatever you want. You might give it 18 months. So once it's 18 months, call me back and we can sue them for you and get your case moving. Especially uh, if the bans get lifted. You said uh, we should uh, uh, wait until 18 months? I mean, you could do it now. You've waited long enough. Uh, USCIS, should, USCIS should process an I-130 within a year for anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, about this case, I, I should contact with you. About suing that? Yeah, here I'll put. You can just shoot us an email. I'll put the email address in the chat right now, so you have it. All right, Ali. Thank you, buddy. For your Take care. Okay, bye bye. Bye. All right. Next up is Lena. Lena. Hi, Lena. Hi. Good morning. Well, good day. I don't know what time is there. Good. Thank you for asking. Um. I've been following for a while, and I want to say that I appreciate a lot what you're doing, especially this type of uh, videos help a lot. Um, well, we are about to have our interview, my husband and I, uh, for our AOS here in Tucson, Arizona. And I was, um, we have a lawyer. But she mentioned in the last email that sometimes because of COVID, they give the excuse to um, not let the, the, the lawyer come in to the room with a, with a couple of the person who's gonna be in their interview. So I would like to know your opinion about those cases of if you ever have experienced something like that. Yeah, so, so that's sort of a relatively new thing because of COVID. And it's funny that you bring this up. I was just talking to my wife, Amani, who I practice with. And um, we have a, we have a couple clients up in Chicago, a husband and a wife, and they got scheduled their citizenship cases. They got scheduled for interview one on Friday in February, one on the following Monday, and they they have no bad immigration history, no criminal stuff, and they're wondering whether they can go on their own. And they raise that idea that you know the they're now letting the attorney attend by phone. Now, I don't think in most cases that that's a good idea. I think it's there's no substitute for the attorney being there with the clients, but um, we've had cases here in the office where, like in your situation, they said, come on in and they put the husband, the spouses in one case in one room, and then they put the lawyers in the other room and then they put the officer in the third room. But usually the usually the lawyers with the client. Um, but, you know, as long as the lawyer has the opportunity to speak, I don't think you need to be too worried about you being in a different room than the lawyer. As long as the lawyer's there okay. for, every, for every part of it. I think it's fine, especially if they prepare you well for the interview. Okay. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Because she even mentioned that in case that she doesn't feel well by the day of the interview, she would like to reschedule. 
because for experience of other lawyers here in the city, they have seen that even they went already set up the, the, the call, receive a call from there, they deny, they, they, they gave excuses about it. So I'm just wondering, and uh, I'm wondering if you have ever had an experience um, of this office um, in Tucson. I because I know. Been, no, no? I've, been to, I've been to Phoenix, but I haven't been to Tucson. When you said Tucson, I was like, oh, there's an office I haven't been to. Yeah, I haven't been, I haven't been to Tucson. I would imagine being so close to the border that they're probably pretty strict and sort of law and order types, I would imagine. I don't know that for sure, but that's what my gut would tell me. Wait, so so you're saying, but you're saying that the 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 officers are denying what? They're they're denying extensions, or what are they denying? I don't no. understand what you were saying. They are denying the call the lawyers. They are they give excuses, so things oh, that like, sounds that. like them. Yeah, that sounds like a trick they would try to pull. Yeah, I would say no. We're not going ahead with it if you don't call the lawyer. But I I think I think the lawyer should always go. Yeah, that, that's what she said. In case that she doesn't feel good by, by then, she would like to reschedule the interview because she doesn't want to take the risk by um, having an excuse from the USAS and then call her because that has been happening to other, other lawyers from the area. Yeah, I'll, you always want to try to go ahead with your interview if you can, but if somebody's sick, yeah. somebody's sick, so. Okay, and um, I have a... I have a just one last question about regarding okay. the people because I read this about another group uh, about what happened when the person doesn't have the I-94, like even when they cannot access about the, the, the things that they have on file or even the the entrance, because even if you don't have an, an I-94, you can get all the records that of your entrance with your passport and visa. So. You mean you can't find the most recent I-94? Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah. A little so, person doesn't have one. Right. So um, this is a good question. I'm glad you, I just wrote it down. I'll, I'll make a YouTube video about this. But um, remember, when you're applying for adjustment of status, it's your burden to show that you're admissible to the United States. And one of the things that's your responsibility of showing is that you were legally and lawfully admitted into the United States. So if I was presented with a situation where a client um, couldn't find their I-94, I might try to track it down through CBP, the Customs and Border Patrol Freedom of Information Act request before I filed. Okay. So like now's not the best time to be looking for the I-94 um, or, or to be thinking about how to establish that I was lawfully admitted. That's something that you really need to nail down almost before you file, but certainly before the interview. Okay, got it. Yeah, because for some people like living in the border, you right. don't need all the time the I-94, but you can get your records of all the entrants that you have had in the past for the last that? five years, I think. Do you have that? Yes, I do. And how yes. long ago how long ago was the last entry? Uh it was December twenty eighth. December twenty eighth? Oh, so it just came back. Mm, yes. No, well, the thing is, for the when I came in the last time was because of the holidays, because my fiance lives here in, in Saborita. Then um, until days after my entrance, well, weeks after my entrance, we decided to get married after almost oh, over so three years of relationships. Yeah. December 28th last year. Yes. 2019. Oh, yes, 2019. I'm sorry. I'm still confused about the year. Yeah. No, that's okay. It's we're you know, we're at that place where you're still writing January 5th, 2020 on your checks, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I get that. Um Okay. So Yeah. I mean, I would have tried to nail down proof of entry beforehand. You can do it, but it's your burden. So you have to make them happy. And if you cross the border, that might be tough. Did anybody cross with you? My daughter. How old is My she? My daughter. Well, she's right now 19 and she's in Mexico. Okay. Well, what does your lawyer say about this? Uh, she said it's not an issue because it, I have the, the I have the record of crossing. Yeah. Well, you know, that might be true, but all it takes is one pain in the ass officer to give you grief about it. So hopefully it'll be fine. 
but I'd be a little bit nervous about it. Okay. Okay. I, mean, I don't think there's much you can do. Um, you might get an affidavit from your daughter talking about when, I mean, do you know the date you entered? Do you know where you entered and, you know, like what time of day? Like, do you know all the details of when you entered? Because you'd want to. Yes. Wanna, you want to know that. You want to know that backwards and forwards for the interview. Yes. Yes. Actually, uh, <clears throat> my husband and it was my 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 uh, fiance. He was uh, exactly in front of the entrance when you get here over there in Nogales. So he was there waiting for me. Okay. And, and we have a conversation back and forth about where. Okay, where, so where I'm, crossing. I'm going to nail all that down and be real clear about how that all went down. Okay. 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 Love, you know, when's your interview? Uh, it's going to be on Wednesday, 13th. 13th. Oh, next week, next Wednesday. Oh, yes. Good luck. Let me know how it <laughs> Thank goes. you. All right. Thank you. Ya. Okay. Bye, Bye. Lena. Bye. All right. That was Lena getting ready for her green card interview in Tucson. AZ. AZ. Let's go to Felix. Hello, Felix. Oh, hello. How are you? How are you? Fine, thank you. What my question. My question is that um, my husband, who is actually the Felix, came in as an LPR, and he made a, a an application for me and the children. The I-130 was, was, was approved, and my children's name were on the I-130. However, um, when the USCIS replied, they asked me to, I mean, I was going on with my adjustment of status, but they didn't approve my children because they said my husband is, uh, the children are immediate relative to him. So the case, the I-824 was denied. Now, we contacted USCIS and um, they said this was an administrative error when we were able to get to a tier two officer. However, we have not been able to contact them again or to make them to rectify this error. So I was thinking that you didn't look, I didn't think you looked like a Felix. What's, what's your name? My name is Toyin. Toyin? <laughs> yes. And Toyin, so your spouse had a green card. How did he get his green card? Through my um, stepdaughter, his daughter. Okay. And so, okay. And so he so filed an I-130 and a 45 for you and your children. Yeah, for me, and he listed the names of the children. We listed the names of the children. Are they? Are the children right? Because he's a green card holder, he doesn't have to file a separate I one thirty for each child. That's right. He he's supposed to file an I one thirty for each child. No, he wasn't. If he was a citizen, he had to. But because he's a green card holder, he did. You did it right. Yes, we thought so. So then, so then you had an interview, and you, Toyin, you got approved for your green card. Yes. As the spouse but of my the children spouse. were denied. Mm -hmm. Hello? Which field office Which was field it? Office was um it, it's in Houston. And when, Texas. Houston, Texas. When was the denial? The denial came last year. Was it this year? No, last year, 2020. When? And um, but I, I just got when? my uh, that was in June. Mm. That was in June, but we had filed um, the IH24 since 28th of August 20, uh, 2019. Now, my children are very, very distraught about this whole issue because we filed before the ban. And one of them has now aged out, unfortunately, right. according to uh the, the present condition but she was she wasn't aged she hadn't aged out by the time we filed so i'm a little so worried I'm that we haven't done anything on the case since, since june that's that can be a little bit of a problem yeah but but you see he, uh, there was a ban on immigration to internet it didn't matter okay if they, if they made that ban didn't even apply to you yet because you never got to that point 
So mm. I spoke so, with Mrs. Hawkins. So, you did? You did? Yes. And what did she say? Why, why, why didn't you file a motion to reopen? That's what I don't understand. I, I we spoke with her and um she was she was suggesting that maybe we file another I want thirty each for the children. But then we, we said look there were there was a ban. The gentleman called me from your office. Um another gentleman called me mm -hmm. and said, Let's go ahead with the I the, the I want thirties. No, I said no, because they, they told us that this was an administrative error. Mm -hmm. A tier a tier two officer actually wrote to us and said this is an administrative error. And and they have they have they are reviewing case, they have reached out to the office. But 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 you see, we can't get right now. We can't get past the electronic uh, um, answering machine. Okay, I'm gonna mute you for a minute. Okay, I'm gonna get out of feedback. Okay, and then I'll tell you what I think. Okay? Thank you. Okay, so this is a good example and a good learning lesson. Um, when USCIS makes a mistake, you can't just call and talk to a two tier two tier two level officer. You have to actually file a motion with them pointing out their mistake and you only have 30 days to do that. So I think Amani, my wife was right when she said you probably need to file new I-130s because that old case is dead even though it was their mistake. We could try to get them to reopen it, but I think that that's a loser of an argument. I think you're gonna be much better off, especially if people are starting to age out that you want to do that sooner rather than later. You, you you should have filed a motion to reconsider back in July after you got the denial, even though it was their mistake. And now that we didn't, I think you have to start over. So now I'm going to unmute un unmute you. Close to, 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 okay, the host has unmuted the mic. You're good to go. You're good to go. Oh, okay. She didn't ask us to file a motion. She just said, let's file. <laughs> Um, because the people told us that they were going to rectify it. That was what they told us. They said, oh, we're looking into this. And one of their own people actually continued calling us and saying, don't think we've forgotten about you. We're going to do something about it. But then later, everything just went silent. And that's what they do. And that's what, I'm, I'm, I'm the them. Oh, just because of the feedback, you can just email us back and we'll... We'll follow up, but um, that feedback's driving me crazy. So sorry about that, Toyin. Toyin, um, we can. I th I think you're starting over. I think that even though it was their mistake, and even though USCIS made promises that they were going to fix it, I think that at the end of the day, um, you're you're not going to get any relief because it's too late to reopen that case, and they're not going to do it all on their own. They're not going to do it just because they said they would, and the fact that now you're just getting the answer machine, that's exactly what um, what we're seeing time and time again, that USCIS makes a mistake and then our clients pay the price for it. So I don't think that you're going to get a, uh, you're going to get an, a, a positive answer unless you start over. I think Imani was right. I'll talk to her about it, but I, I think that old case is dead. And even though they admitted their mistake, you need to move past that because nothing's going to happen. All right, I'm going to take a pause real quick, and we'll get to Arthur here in just a minute. But before I do, um, we have opened a new satellite office, um, and we could really use some Google reviews. If I'm going to put the link in the chat. If you guys could leave me a Google review just real quick, I'd really appreciate it. Um, here's, here's the link for that. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get to Arthur. But if everybody could take like 60 seconds and leave us this review, I'd really appreciate it. Hold on a second. Did it go? Let's try that one more time. Oh, it's not liking my link. That's interesting. Let's see. Oh, yeah, it's going. Okay. All right, good. All right. We'll go ahead and talk to Arthur. Hi, Arthur. Hey, Jim, how are you? I'm back with a quick question. Go Happy New Year and uh, congratulations with opening a new offices. Thank you. Um, I just got a question about um, potentially requesting a refund from the USCIS. 
Uh, well, I say good luck with that. Good luck with that. <laughs> I know it's pretty straightforward on their website, but I just thought maybe I consult with you. So I filed two petitions, I-130, and within two weeks or three weeks period, I decided to withdraw both of them. I sent an official letter based on your recommendation. I wrote it up and I sent it to them. I haven't got any response yet, uh, but I'm sure it's going to come soon. Do you think it's a possibility since they haven't taken any action on my case to even like consider uh, requesting a, free, uh, a refund? Kind of hurts losing a thousand dollars on the spot. Thank you. <laughs> to, <laughs> so um, yeah, I thought uh, I was wondering if you can give me some opinion on that. If if for instance, if I do fight it, for instance, whether I dispute it or somehow, and what do you affect? Do you think it's going to affect in the future my proceedings with them? I don't think there's a way to dispute it. I don't think you're going to get your refund. I think that money is gone. I don't think that if you try to get it back, that's going to work. I also don't think that if you try to get it back, that that's going to hurt you down the road. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. Um, but I would just, they're not going to, they're not going to give you that money back. It's almost impossible. And there's no way to challenge it or to tell them that you really want them to do it just because um, I just don't see it happening at all. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I just yeah, just wanted to know majorly if if I do end up getting it back, for instance, through somehow. If, if you if you get it back, let me know because I'd like to be able to tell people that. But I've never heard of anybody getting a refund from USAS. That's like that money's long gone. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna make a video about this too. So all right. yeah, I was looking about a little bit of information, and I did call a uh, contact at the tier two. Um, the way, it's funny how I got to them. I had to tell them that I'm disabled. Um, that's the only way you can get through them. And that's, sh and then basically, uh, she recommended if you, she submitted something on my behalf, basically, if you're in the future looking into, um, refiling for the same people, for instance, there's a, there's a possibility that you might be able to get it back. So she filed something other by, on my behalf, but I don't know, but we'll see how that goes. But. All right, buddy. Good luck. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Bye bye. Right, See you, buddy. Bye. All right. Next up is Sam. Sam. Hello, Sam. Hi. Good morning. By the way, I go through. Um, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Uh, good. Um, I have a question. So my mom um is a green card holder, and then she filed nine one thirty for my sister. She's now sixteen for three and a half years since two thousand seventeen. Um, I don't know. I, I called one 800 a couple of times and then they um, request for action. Um, and I have to work with, they, uh, wait for 30 days. Um, they get back to me and said, there's nothing wrong with the case. They just have a lot of work, but it's three and a half years. We filed uh, July 2017. What country? Uh, we come from Cambodia. Mm. There's no way it should be taking three and a half years. Exactly. Um, because originally, um, so she is adopted, um, but we mm -hmm. adopted her way back when she was two. Um, so we filed in 2015, we got back six months. But the thing is, um, my, my mom did not know that she need to go to the court to get her adoption paper. So she got denial, denied by that. And then we go back to Cambodia, get all the adoption papers straight out, and then we file I-130 again in 2017, um, and then cricket. And then um, 2019, we got uh, a, a letter said that our case has been transferred to a different location is uh, Lee Submit, Missouri. And that's it. That So I'm just wondering, what can we do? Is it the lawsuit the only way? Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. Lawsuit's the only way. Lawsuit will, will get it moving. Um, you probably also want to get a whole copy of the filings that your mom has filed. I'd like to see that old denial and everything because okay. that's helpful. But for now, just sue them and you should get a decision from USCIS in about 90 days. Okay. That's perfect because I did call your office and uh, we live in San Diego, California. So we were so excited that you opened a new office. Well, I'm excited office. too. I'm excited too. I just, uh, we just got hired to go. I'm going to be out there on the 22nd, um, which is great because I have to buy my son a car. So I'm going to make a great trip of it. So, oh, that's yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, yes. I, um, I'm just waiting uh, to hear back from one of the lawyer and um, from your office. And then we're going to move forward with that. Okay. Thank you. And I really enjoy watching you. Thanks, Sam. Thank you. Happy New Year. Bye. Okay, bye. Yes. That was nice talking to old Sam. All right. Um, I am going to talk to Abdul next. Hello, Jim. Thank you for Hello, having me. Hello, Abdul. 
How you doing? Good, good. Thank you. So I have two questions. Number one, I got uh, a green card uh, through an asylum. And uh, my question, can I still, me and my family, use my national passport from Yemen to travel outside the state? Or I must get the travel document? You should get the travel document. Travel document. Yep. Okay. So the second question. I know myself cannot go back to my home country, Yemen. Can my family, my wife and kids go? Because I was the, the principal and they are just derivatives. These are all great questions, Abdul. I'm going to make some videos about these. I like these questions a lot. Um, okay. So we always have to think about this backwards. Or actually, we always have to think about the future, right? Yeah. So in the future, Abdul is going to apply for citizenship. And in the future, Abdul's spouse and children are going to apply for citizenship. So we're going to be sitting across from an immigration officer three or five years from now, whenever it is. And they're going to look at your file. And this is true even if someone like Trump isn't president. This is just regular immigration. They're going to look at your file and they're going to say, hmm, Abdul or Abdul's wife or Abdul's child how did you get your green card? Oh, we got our green card because my dad swore under oath that if we go back to Yemen, bad things are going to happen to us. And then they're going to look at your travel history for the kids or your spouse. And they're going to say, hmm, that's really strange. We gave you asylum. I mean, if we go back to your first question, they could say, we get, and this is why I gave you the reason. This is the reason I gave you the answer for the first question. Well, this this doesn't make sense to us. I'm just trying to understand. You swore under oath that bad things would happen to you and your family. Your your or your dad swore that bad things would happen to you and your family if you went back to Yemen. And then once you got your green card, you everybody but dad went back. That that makes me think that you're lying. That you lied to us. And that's what we don't want to happen. So my vote is nobody goes back to Yemen, at least until they get their citizenship. But you swore under oath that if you ever went back, bad things were going to happen. So I think you're setting yourself up or your family members. up. I understand your spouse and your kids want to see people back in Yemen. I totally get that. But I'm just the immigration lawyer. And my loyalty is to putting you in the strongest immigration standpoint that I can. And so my vote is there's 217 countries in the world. You can visit 216 of them. You just can't you just can't visit Yemen. Thank you so much, Jim. Appreciate it. You got it, buddy. Good luck. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Abdul. Thanks, buddy. Nice to meet you too. Yep. See ya. See ya. All right, all right. Next up, he's got his headsets on. He's ready to go. His name is Joel. Let's welcome Joel. Oh man, when I have my beard, I look like Joel. I where are my headsets? Okay. Damn it. All right. Joel. <laughs> how you doing? Hey, Jim, man? How you doing? Good. Great, thank you. Um, firstly, I wanted to say I appreciate that I sent you a message some time ago and you made a video about it, so I really appreciate it. Cool. Um, uh, secondly, I uh, wanted to know if you knew what was going on with uh, the delay in getting receipt notices. I filed an I-485 just over two months ago, and it's crazy. Such a joke. I mean, in normal immigration times, your background check would be underway. You would have already been fingerprinted and... It's all just baked in. They've they've rigged up all these ways to slow down people's cases. So I, I made a video about this the other day. It was more of an offhand comment. But if I'm Biden and the people that come into immigration, the first thing I'm doing is figuring out the easy places to speed things up or just to get things back to normal. And I would think that receipt notices, biometrics, and starting the background check will be the first things to go faster. I mean, it's going to take a long time for Biden to and his team to clear out the wreckage of these last four years, right? Um, but I think this will be the thing that happens first. I think we'll start to. I mean, we've never had this happen before. Um, I've had I've had fiance and spouse cases approved in two months. Um, so the idea that yours hasn't even really started. It's ridiculous. And maybe somebody, you know, if it goes on for too long and we don't see signs that Biden is making it go faster, I think we might sue him.
just a, sort of as a group just to get their attention. It's just ridiculous. But for now, I think you're just sitting tight and waiting. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, Jim. Where, where do you live? So I'm currently uh, living in Texas, um, mm -hmm. in Austin. Uh, but actually, my job and my employment is in New York City, which leads to my second question. So the yeah. perm and everything was based on my role in New York, but I am temporarily living here during the pandemic while I'm working from home. Do you think that's going to be an issue for me? I think they're going to have to bend the rules a lot for people given the pandemic. I'm not sure how that's all going to play out. It could technically be an issue, but I, I, I think it's just uh, they're going to understand. They're going to have to understand, I think. And I think uh, six months will expire and the AC21 will kick in anyway, right? No. If I end up here more permanently, they're not going to yeah. get me done in six months. No, not if they haven't been <laughs> here yet. Um, and then my third and final question is, we oh, were very fortunate. Media, I say. Go ahead, yeah. go. Go ahead. Sorry, Emma, uh, we were very fortunate, or the fact that we're Australian really helps is my uh, wife won the diversity visa, which was the original question that I asked you about, and you recommended not doing a second I-485 to uh, avoid confusion, um, so to, to have the, like, the two cases running in parallel, because uh, we have like a second path. Uh, the, the question relates to, uh, would it be worthwhile uh, kicking off the process to have the consular processing path for the diversity visa, just in case we wanted to like duck home, get that, not worry about the employment one that's going slow? Yes, I would. So there's no issues doing, no issues doing that or complexities. There, there's so much screwy shit going on right now. That's the least of our yeah. concern. I'd say go for so, it. So if I had AP and EAD, I could just duck home and then go go for a visa appointment and come back with a immigrant visa well here's what i'll say about that before we go off doing all that stuff i'd want to look at everything i can't just tell you that here on the call yeah yeah, yeah. i want to look at everything but conceptually that would work all right perfect jim thank you so much all right joel peace buddy thank you you got it man all right i'm gonna um i'm gonna drop that link if everybody can leave us a review uh again if here again here's that link we're really trying to get up to 25 reviews we're at like 16 so if everybody could leave us a review it'd be a big help there's the link i'd appreciate that let's go to sushil hi sushil hello zing good afternoon how are you doing good how about you i'm well thanks fan of your great work uh, thank you for having me here thanks man I have a quick question. I, uh, I'm already in the process of getting a green card interview um, based on US citizen spouse. And I was basically uh, scheduled on the end of November. And for that, I took my medical exam. But then my wife came in contact with positive, uh, a COVID positive patient. And because of that, we had to reschedule, well, their phone doesn't work. So we had to go on the interview date at the field office and then tell them to reschedule, which they did. Now it's scheduled towards the end of this January. Now, obviously my medical exam has crossed that six days period already. So does that mean I will have to take another exam or it's only applicable when we are filing um, the paper, the six days period? I would reach out to the facility that did it and they shouldn't charge you for a full exam again. Just ask them how they want to handle it. Is there a way they can give you a new sealed envelope and update it? Maybe they need to check you out real quickly, but that you don't have to pay the whole fee. But it'd be better to bring an updated medical in a sealed envelope to the interview than try to rely on that one that's past the 60 days. In fact, I did check with them during my first uh, medical exam because I was kind of expecting right. something like that. My wife works in clinic and it's a likely scenario. And right. I told them what happens if uh, if I had to reschedule and it goes beyond 60, day, 60 days. They just say, we don't know anything about it. We just know that it has to reach in USCIS hand within 60 days. And if I had to redo everything, pretty much I'll be paying everything again because uh, the entire process and the only thing i will not be doing is taking the vaccinations that i have already taken so i was uh, the, the one thing you could do you might get you might get a break from the office or you might just wait and see how it plays out at the interview but it, it's it's always nicer to have the updated medical with you because you don't want them to give you a request for evidence 
for the medical because sometimes they add other stuff to the request for evidence and then it's a big old hassle. So, you know, if if money is a big concern, then don't redo the medical. If you can afford it and you want to get your case approved, hopefully that day or right after, bring a new medical, whatever it costs. I have I've been through RFE once uh, for my birth certificate. So I was under the impression that everything is in order. They did send a letter as well saying everything is in order. Oh, yeah, but that doesn't mean anything. I mean, they, they. I would say, especially these days, even if the service center has sent the case on, really, so first of all, that's a good point. So if you get an RFE or if they tell you that your case is moving along, that's no like guarantee that you're not going to get a request for evidence at your interview. And you could get a pain in the ass officer who just decides to be a jerk and ask you for 12 different things. They might not ask about your birth certificate, but they might come up with other things. So don't ever rely on prior actions in your case as a guarantee that you won't get another RFE. All right. I did watch your video on that uh, medical exam as well, but this particular topic wasn't covered. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and when I look into USS website for guidelines for the medical exam, they did mention explicitly 60 days before filing, but when it came to interview, they just mentioned as soon, as close as possible. Now, no, I was- No, 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 there's somewhere there's a rule. I don't know the rule because I don't do these anymore. I don't deal with the medical and all that stuff anymore. But, and the rule has changed like three times in the last two years, but there is a, there is a timeliness requirement for the medical that's brought to the interview. And I think it's that same 60 days. I don't know for sure. Maybe one of my team members is watching the show and can say it in the chat, but I, I'm pretty sure it's that same 60 day rule. Yeah, it is uh, still 60 days. I yeah. checked out that it. So like I said, I'm gonna let you go, Sushil. Like I said, though, if you can afford it, redo it. Otherwise, just go to the interview and see how it plays out. All right, great advice. Thank you, Zing. Have a great okay. new year. You Bye -bye. Got all right, let's talk to D. D's been waiting patiently, and he's got the same shirt on that I have. How are you doing, D? <laughs> hey, good. Thank you, Jim. And thanks for everything you're doing on behalf of immigration. And My pleasure. Enjoy your show and all your uh, YouTube videos. I've learned a lot. Thanks, man. I, I, you're welcome. I have a couple quick questions, if you don't mind. Um, Go for it. Uh, um, submitted a I-130 back in February 2020 and um, have not gotten a decision yet from USCIS, but I understand. I just want to make sure nothing to do yet. You're saying about a year. If you don't hear within a year. Is, it, is it an overseas case? Brazil. Uh -huh. Brazil. And it's still at USCIS. Yes. And we're um, talking February? February 2020. They received it on the 18th. Yeah. I'd wait at least 15 months given COVID. Okay. I give them three or four extra months for COVID. So usually it's a year. So I think you're okay. Okay, great. Um, and then the other thing is asking for a friend who has an F1 Mm -hmm. uh, Asa here, she's from Brazil. Uh, she had to return back in December because her mother has stage four cancer and is oh, too bad. Yeah, a bad place. But anyway, uh, returning to the U.S., does she still have to quarantine in another country, in a third country? That I don't and, know. Okay, I haven't seen any extension of that. Um, yeah, um, I thought it expired December thirty first, but I thought it did too, and. I haven't heard. I just don't know. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I would just Google presidential proclamation Brazil COVID okay. and see what you come up with. Okay. And then she had also heard something about um, that if your university was completely online, that that got rever reversed again. But I thought that was like a no. Well, there's a couple of questions when traveling on an F1. No, my first question is, is the, va if the, is the F1 stamp in the passport still valid i believe so yes okay yeah. so that's um, good because we don't want them to have to go to the embassy to get a right. new stamp. Okay. okay um number two so so even when they were here in the yeah no so your question about are they holding it against f1 students that their classes are all online yeah they undid that rule so we're okay there okay, okay that's cool okay okay so her only issue is how to get back here yeah yeah okay all right. Well, thank you so much. Bye, bud. Take care. Okay. All right. Bye. Okay. Have a good day. You too. All right. We're flying through these now. Um, we're going to talk to Hakan. Hakan? Hakan. Uh, hi, Jim. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm Grant as well. 
uh, I got a couple of questions uh, regarding uh, EB2, uh, National Interest Waiver, uh, self-petition. Uh, uh, instead of the perm application by the employer, I would like to proceed uh, by the self-petition, pet uh, like as in the case of the, uh, the Obama administration, dinosaur case. Uh, so I would like to know in advance, also I'm talking with a company uh, who is a EB2 writer company uh, to, go, uh, to go with my business plan as well. So I would like to know in advance what is my chance of success. Uh, I, I got a, deg a degree a BA in economics. I have 20 years experience uh, as a marketing uh, manager and I am working in an international company uh, which has offices also in states as well. But instead of uh, applying uh, and uh, difficult procedures of the perm applications and uh, under the employer sponsorship, I would like to proceed uh, with the self-petition, uh, which I thought would, will be a much more easier uh, procedure uh, together with the EB2 writer company. Can I have your point of view in that aspect, whether I am right, uh, I am right on the right track, or uh, should I change to other way? Have you already paid the EB2 writing company? Uh, not yet. Good. Don't because it's not going to work. You mm -hmm. said you you have a bachelor's degree. You don't have a doctorate. Uh, I, I don't have a, but I have, I have uh, more than twenty years experience. What, but what, what is, what does your work, how does that advance the American's interest? Uh, I, because I would like to uh, prove, uh, which is the uh, U.S. Uh, interest, how U.S. would benefit about me. That is the reason uh, I would like to put. That's what I'm asking. Uh, how is it, how is it going to benefit America to let you not go through PERM? That's the question. How does mm -hmm. that benefit America? I mean, mm -hmm. Here's just so you know, you asked for my opinion. So here it comes. Mm -hmm. Number one, I'm very conservative on national interest waiver. So I've told professors with PhDs and publications that are doing things like in healthcare to save people's lives. I've told them that I don't think they have a national interest waiver case. Mm -hmm. I don't I, I know you don't have a national interest waiver case. That's this is a this is a bad idea. It's not mm -hmm. going to work. And it's not even close. It's you're 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 sort of barking up the wrong tree. The mm -hmm. national interest waiver is is a rule that allows people that are doing amazing work at the top of their field, saving lives or saving America. That's it. So, mm -hmm. like if you invented some way to get rid of COVID, or if you invented some way to clean all of our water, or if if you had people who were the tops in their industry who would mm -hmm. be willing to write letters about how you're going to help America, that would work. But marketing uh, and a, marketing is not going to work. A bachelor's degree is not going to work. And mm -hmm. um, I just don't see this working at all. Mm -hmm. that's, that's I'm glad you haven't paid the EB2 writers because this is not what you're trying to do isn't what it was designed for. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Because when I look at the dinosaur case, I see that uh, I may have the possibility, but your idea is not to uh, to proceed uh, from that way. Because I, I mean, the, the easy response from them is, if this work that you're doing is important, or if you have these great skills, why can't you find an employer to go through perm? Mm -hmm. I see. Because it, it, it this has this has nothing to do it's a kind of headache for the employer to to perm. Yeah, but you know. Don't forget, part of PERM is that they have to certify there aren't any Americans who can do the job that you want to do. And so, I mean, marketing is something that all kinds of people do. So I, I just think that's a, a real tough sell. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Good Thank luck. You. With Sorry to Thank be so you. Bye. 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 Yep. Bye. 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 All right. Next up, Abdi Noor. Abdi Noor. How are you? Good. Good. How are you, Mr. Jim? I'm great, buddy. Thank you. Um, so uh, I, we applied for the visa extension, B2 extension, last June. 
But the thing is, I applied separately, everyone separately, like myself, my wife, and my two-year kid. Then I received the the appointment for the the biometrics for my wife and my kid. And yesterday I received the approval notice just for my wife. But the date, I mean, uh, the the extension was valid until December twenty. 20, 22nd, last December 22nd, so it's already expired. Was it a six month extension or was it shorter than six months? Oh, it was six months. Yeah. So, so now what, what's your plan and why do you keep getting why do you want extensions? Why why didn't you go back on time or why haven't you gone back now? My country borders are still closed. Can what you imagine? Country? Algeria. So you can go back now if you wanted to. No. So, okay. Okay. So what's the question as far for me? Is it like, what should you do or what? Yeah. What, what should I do? Because the, the extension, it's already expired for my wife and I didn't receive it in my, my, my approval notice or my kid. So what should I do? Should I apply for another extension for her or just wait to get approval for me and my kid? No, you got to treat them all separately. You got to handle them separately. You got to, I mean, did they, did they, did you get a receipt notice back for yours? Yeah. For my wife, not my, me. You didn't get your, nothing received it for me or my, my, my kid. So in theory, they don't even know that you want us, that you want us, that you, they don't know that you're still here. And in theory, if, if, if that thing didn't go to the right office, they don't know where you are and you're accru accruing unlawful presence, right? I have no idea. Uh, the, the case is just, uh, it says my case was received and the kid, my, 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 my daughter, the, the case said that the biometric ha has been received. That's it. And for my yeah. wife, I just received the, the approval notice. Right. But on your case, you actually did receive a receipt notice. Yeah. That they received my case. Yep. And you, you have a case number. Yes, I do. And when you log into the USCIS, what does it say about the case number? Case received. That's it. Okay. Well, that's okay. Um, I would go ahead and file another extension and just like act like I would file extensions for all three of you. And I even if I didn't receive it though, any, anything from them, it's stupid and you got to pay that money. And I'm sorry, but you know, even if it's, a, as you know, now, cause of your wife, even if it's approved, it's already expired. expired. So, right? so yeah. is, she, is she illegal or, or what? No, you should have filed. You should have filed a new one for her before. The the I mean, the most they could have given her was till December twenty second. That's the most they can give is six months. Yeah. So in th so I'd file it right away. Okay, for all, all of us. I, yeah, but I mean, this is just so you know, Abdinor. This is all very shaky. It's like, like, is there a third country you can go to? Can you go somewhere other than Algeria? No, I can't. Then I don't know what else you can do. Then keep filing for extensions. I mean, uh, should and, I just and, file for and, all of us? And I think you need to document all of your efforts to leave. Like, yeah, I have the return ticket. It's an open ticket, so anytime the the country is open, I can leave. So they're just not letting anybody in, or they're not letting in people who are in America. No, or? you need to. I mean, a lot of documentation to get in, but they are not letting anybody. We, we keep sending documents to our embassy but well i'm saying they, you need to doc, you need to document all that stuff you need you're, you might need to prove later on why yeah the other country is closed right yeah i can yeah. i can provide that yeah all right buddy good luck thanks a lot have a good day sir. all right see you man all right we got time for one more and we're gonna go to henry henry's next our last caller of the day. Hello, Henry. Hi, Jim. How are you? Thanks for having me. You got it. Um, so I was approved an H-1B last July, and um, I, but I, I needed stamped in my passport so I can travel eventually. And I had a visa appointment scheduled for December 28th, but I, I decided to postpone that because right. I wasn't sure uh, the embassy would actually... I would I would qualify under that 
the Department of State rules. Uh, I don't know if they call it the FAQs or whatever. Um, so I postponed it to June. You think it's more likely than not that uh, in June there will basically it will be just you know um, pretty straightforward. Uh, Which embassy? Spain. Why do you need a stamp? Like why? Do you have to travel for work or anything? Well, I would like to visit my family and stuff. Uh, yeah. Well, here's what I'll say. I mean, check with me in June, Henry, because here's the deal. Once a week, I'm talking to somebody who's in exactly your situation. Either they went from an F1 to an H1B, or they got an H1B extension, whatever, or they changed employers, and then they go back home, and they make that appointment, and then the embassy just won't give them the visa, and they're stuck outside of the United States for six months. So let's see if things get back to normal six months from now and then talk about you leaving that's ugly okay you made a really good decision not to go in december i'm really glad you did that let's see if things have gotten better six months from now so but in normal circumstances if you get if you are granted an h1b you go and you go to your home country to get a stamp you would without COVID or and without trump or both you would usually you would usually how does that process work? You go, you, you have an, you yeah. have an interview and they, you, you still have the interview. You still have to make the appointment. You can make the appointment before you leave. And usually what I do is, okay. So if Henry's going to go back home to Spain for three weeks, then I would say, Henry, make that appointment for the day after you arrive, because sometimes they screw around with giving you the visa. So you don't want to schedule the appointment on the first day because on the last day you're there. You want to schedule it on the first day you're there. Right. But I'd say, yeah, during normal times without COVID and without Trump, 96 97 percent of the time going to get that stamp is easy peasy but right now they're playing all kinds of tricks with it so hopefully it'll go back to normal all right sounds good thank you for your help look see you henry all right everybody that'll do it for today that was our friend henry we had a nice chat with everyone um we didn't get to everybody i see mufasa and f and sam in there sorry about that we weren't able to get to you We'll be back here on Thursday at noon. Do I have a zit? I think I have a zit or something. Anyway, we'll be back here at noon on Thursday. So a trick, if you want to get on the call, get here early. You can actually log in early, a couple minutes, and uh, we'll be here. Thanks a lot, everybody. Happy New Year, and we'll see you soon. Okay, bye.